Orange County 72 brings up something very interesting. And, um, yeah, we do owe a debt to your ancestors. Um, Ritz, what do you think of the Orthodox Church in the Ukraine? My family years ago lived there in the 1890s, the Maronites. Google it. It's crazy, but <clears throat> we brought the wheat that made U.S. breakfast. Yeah, I believe the uh, Archbishop Lazar talks about this. The Maronites were getting a hard time in the West, I think in uh, Flanders and in France and Belgium and uh, Switzerland and Austria, places like that. Or the Mennonites, Mennonites, not Maronites. Sorry, I said Maronites, Mennonites. He says Mennonites. Uh, they're kind of the uh, Quaker groups of Amish-ish people. They, they all come out of the Brethren or the Friends Church. Not the modern day cult, the Brethren, but the yeah, the Friends Church are the, the, what you call the brother and the, the opposite of what the Puritans were. It's very interesting to look at the Quaker Puritan divide um, and reading a lot of the early American history. I kind of have a love for the Quakers because the Puritans would make a law about, you know, you can't show your ankles or above your elbow, and then the Quakers would run through the town naked. <laughs> um, but the Orthodox Church. Um, from what I know or what I understand, and not really read about it. I've just, you know, heard um, from Archbishop Lazar and from other publications, you know, second, secondary sources or tertiary sources that the Orthodox Church actually wound up setting a lot uh, aside land for the Maronites. Actually, welcome them. Well, not welcome them, but <clears throat> when they saw them as refugees, they allowed them to be there. Um, since there's no proselytizing, okay, you can live by side by side from us. Uh, I believe things, the wars that happened there, and the or the wars that would foment the rise of the tension that would break into World War One uh, through politics, caused the Maronites to have to leave. Uh, but yeah, the the United States of America, we do have to give credit to the Anglos, the Anglo-Saxon and the Dutch um, for uh, starting this constitution of ours, or uh, the Bill of Rights. But the greatness of America comes from the immigrant, it comes from the many things that are brought from the Irish, the Italians, the Polish, the uh, Ukrainians, and among them the different groups of people, uh, Mennonites, uh, Catholics, Eastern Orthodox, Methodists, um, although Methodism did exist already in America, so did Anglicanism and Congregationalism and most of the Protestant stuff. Uh, but yeah, I, I knew people who their families were uh, the Quaker type Mennonite, or what would become Mennonite or Amish or whatever that you know that strain that <clears throat> had lived in, I believe it was Virginia. And after the Revolutionary War, they had to. Most of these groups had to go over the Appalachian Mountains and live on the other side because people were so hostile towards them because they did not fight in the war. You know, how you know how do you deserve you know this country if you didn't fight for it? Uh, so they they wound up in places like uh, Ohio, Illinois, uh, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania. I think was Penn's Woods set aside for them. I believe I'm not sure what. William Penn, what he was. I know he didn't ever come to the United States. Uh, but it was that whole thing of, you know, well, okay, you can stay here, just get the hell out, you know, get on the other side of the mountains type of thing. But there's an interesting history there in the, the, the Orthodox and the Mennonites. 
and that's stretching back you can see even to I would say you would you could even see back into the 16th century but it's before that even with if you uh, see how the Eastern Orthodox treated Samaritans or Mandaeans there was never the, there was never better relations uh, with any other group than uh, the Orthodox and the Samaritans. You know, the Jews, there was hostilities under the Muslims, there were hostilities. Uh, Roman Catholics, there was hostilities. But since the Eastern Orthodox don't proselytize, and if there's another group that's being oppressed, and uh, they don't force their stuff on other people, Again, there's a difference between evangelism and proselytization. Uh, we're happy to live side by side. Even the, the, an interesting thing, the Mennonites, their head covering actually comes from uh, the Ukrainian uh, Union head covering. If you look at, I actually ran into a girl who, I, I saw her in a bookstore, and this is, right after becoming orthodox and i was very enthusiastic about it i couldn't help it you know i was both of us were in the bookstore for about an hour and i said uh excuse me i'm this may sound very weird but are you um a unit or eastern orthodox she goes um no i'm mennonite why and i said oh your head covering i always you know because i I always loved it when women would cover their hair, you know, that's even coming out of Islam. I always thought it was a beautiful thing. Although my stance on that has, has changed, or not my stance, my feeling about um, that has changed, although certainly not hostile towards it. But the head covering, uh, that uh, type of black um, mesh or lace open, um, you know, not tied, but uh, let dangle on either side that the Mennonite women wear uh, is the same as the uh, the Uniate um, Ukrainians. And Uniate, uh, I realize that could be a derogatory term, um, but it's the Eastern Orthodox of the Slavic countries that wound up uh, coming back under Pope or that's actually incorrect. They came under the Pope. They didn't, again, come under the Pope. Uh, so there's there's a, there's a an interesting relationship there. But uh, I'd like to hear um, more of, uh, if you have any interesting information on this, uh, I'd love to hear, or anybody out there.